and given its content and meaning in the life of the whole Ukumeni. In the life of the whole Ukumeni. This is not easy. Because for all that we say about unity, we are divided. Mm -hmm. And for the grand vision that we have, goal of the ecumenical movement is to bring forth the visible unity of the churches in full uh, Eucharistic fellowship. Yeah. And this is one of the frustrations I have as a person who comes from the Global South and have to engage in a body like the Faith and Order. The one who spoke this morning, Neville Callum, was also in Faith and Order. And we used to have a lot of conversations at the site that much of the discussions was a waste of time for us. Because it is dealing with baggage. I'm sorry if I use that word, but I want to be a bit provocative so that you stay awake. <laughs> baggage that has been brought into the discourse by uh, churches that uh, represent the historic churches uh, in the world, the big churches. So, Roman Catholic, the Orthodox family, and perhaps some of the uh, larger mainline Protestant churches. So, is there any achievement in all these years of the history of the ecumenical movement, have we gone closer? An answer to that would perhaps be in that very important document, the church, uh, its vision, uh, how do they call it? Uh, I think it's here in your uh, resource book. Uh, the ecclesiology uh, uh, statement, or not statement, sorry, the, uh, the church towards a common vision, which is the only second convergence document in the history of faith and order. And by the word convergence, it means that in this multilateral dialogue, churches are able to come to some basis upon which they can undergird their aspiration for unity among the churches. So if you look at this document, you would find that it's one stage, it's now going to be sent to the churches for their reflections. Theological students can also write and give your reflections to the Faith and Order Committee. At every section of this document, there are words in italics which spells out the points at which there is still divergence. There are still questions that cannot cause the church to have a common mind. And I have one example here in this document where it speaks about the ecumenical response to religious pluralism. And this was one chapter in that document, uh, people like us from the uh, Global South took great interest in, and we engage 
the other members who were in the Faith and Order Commission. We tried to the best of our ability to find a language that would reflect, and this is where I come back to this word about ecclesiology and the whole inhabited earth, that would be responsive to the larger concerns and that the unity of the church cannot displace the unity of the whole humankind or as the mission uh, plenary commission uh, plenary session had said the whole cosmos but then even in that section <coughs> there was points of contention and it reads in the words that are placed in italics in this document there remain serious disagreements within and between some churches concerning the issues about religious pluralism. What conclusions may be drawn from uh, biblical teachings regarding the possibility of salvation for those who do not believe in Christ? Some hold that in ways known to God, salvation in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit is possible for those who do not explicitly share Christian faith. Now, it's nice to read what we had to engage in big battle in order to have those lines inserted into this document. It's not a question about just bringing interests from one context into the document, but it's also to bring this larger vision that the unity of the church serves a greater cause, and that's the unity of humankind. How far this is going to have an effect on the ecumenical movement after this assembly is left to be seen. And the rest of the analysis I've done in my notes, you can read it. But let me just now draw your attention to what you have heard in these last days. Let us start first uh, with uh, the uh, statement on ecclesiology, God's gift and call to unity, our commitment. It's in your program book. I spoke about cross-bearing mutual solidarity. Paragraph 8, the church as the body of Christ embodies Jesus' uniting, reconciling, self-sacrificial love to the world on the cross. At the heart of God's own life of communion is forever a cross and forever resurrection, a reality which is revealed to us and through us. So it seems to reflect this emphasis that is crucial, that once and for all makes that shift, that there can be not have an ecclesiology for its own sake without ecclesiology being related to the larger concerns of human life. In other words, you cannot have church without being church. And being church is what should inform your ecclesiology. And I end now with a reference to uh, the presentation from uh, Mission and Evangelism. And uh, here uh, on page uh, 5 it says, God did not send the Son for the salvation of humanity alone or give us a partial salvation. Powerful words. Rather the gospel is the good news for every part of creation and every aspect of our life and society. It is therefore vital to recognize God's mission 
in a cosmic sense and to affirm all life, the whole Oikumene, as being interconnected in God's web of life. As threats to the future of our planet are evident, what are the implications for our participation in God's mission? Brothers and sisters, I hope in this short time I have provided you a survey of the terrain, resources you can draw upon, and of course keep this important point in mind. Have we resolved this important paradigm shift that has been spoken about by Conrad Weiser in the integration of ecclesiology and life in its fullness for all on this planet Earth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Shastri. In a moment, we'll give uh, everyone a chance to uh, ask questions and make comments. But before that, it's my pleasure now to introduce to you uh, Dr. Myung Huk uh, Kim, who is the chair of the Korean uh, Evangelical uh, Fellowship and the co-chair of the Korean World Mission Association. We are delighted uh, you have uh, joined us and uh, delighted. I, I gather you had a little difficulty being uh, welcomed into the hall, but I'm glad you're here and we will look forward to hearing from you. 